Good morning. Happy 2020 from MCAT and Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. I'm here to tell you about all the things that's happening in and around the city of Missoula today and this weekend. Uh, let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. Uh, the weather is looking a little bit cold, misty, and all sorts of snowy this weekend as well as, as we can expect a wind advisory happening this weekend as well. So if you're planning on traveling or traveling back from vacation, you might want to take into that into account. Um, your high is going to be 39. Uh, today, your your high is going to be uh, 42 with a low of 29 degrees. Um, it snowed last night. Uh, most of the snow didn't really stick around too much on some of the uh, main streets in the, the Missoula area, but you never know. Some of the side streets might need some a uh, little bit of work, and you might need to drive a little safer on some of those roads as well. Uh, uh, Saturday, like I said, there's the wind advisory and a 60% chance of rain and snow mixtures. The temperature is a little high, so we won't expect some of those snow uh, to really be happening down in the urban city areas but I do have a little bit of a snow report for you guys so I got this from on the snow.com it kind of tells you exactly how much snow they've gotten in the last 24 and 72 hours so whitefish if you're looking to get up there uh, looks like it had 15 inches of snow in the last 72 hours and two fresh two inches in the last 24 hours um, Big Sky Resort had nine inches in the last 72 hours um, many of this is about to change of course uh, as we are going into the weekend of a little bit of snow happening on Saturday as well so you might have some great uh, snow on Sunday. Uh, you had uh, 13 inches at Snow Bowl in the last 72 hours. I'll talk a little bit more about Snow Bowl because something happened uh, just the other day. Uh, Lost Trail, you have about a inch and tw uh, 21 inches in the last 72 hours. Uh, Showdown Montana, two inches of fresh powder. Uh, Bridger Bowl had 10 inches in the last 72 hours. Uh, Red Lodge didn't have any snow. Discovery Ski Area had about four inches of fresh powder. Uh, Back to Mountain Ski Area, five inches. Great Divide uh, had five inches in the last 72 hours. So it looks like a lot of these places had some fairly fresh if not already has a good base of snow for you guys to go out and about this weekend as well but let's talk a little bit about uh, snowball just a little bit more as they had one of their uh, chairs separate from the chairlift so uh what happened is basically the chairlift uh caught on itself and it pulled yanking the cable and stripping it nobody got hurt but the chairs got caught on itself tearing it off and falling down to the snow people on the lift were helped down through rope and harnesses some were as high as 30 feet off the ground the area around lavelle chairlift was evacuated of course another big thing happened in and around montana is child care resources for women in congress uh this will help transition to the state news and of, of course a congressional candidate uh in new york successfully successfully petitioned the Federal Election Commission in 2018 to allow campaign money to help cover child care costs, but applies only to those running for federal office. Uh, Montana House Representative uh, Kim Dudek is looking to expand those to more local areas, uh, which was denied by the Montana House beforehand. Only six states have laws uh, specifically allowing campaign money for you to be used for child care. Five states are considering it. In most states, including Montana, the law is silent on the issue and up to interpretation for by agencies and or boards. Lawmakers in Minnesota added child care as allowable expenses in 2018, while Colorado, New York, New Hampshire, and California passed the law in 2019. The policy doesn't only help women, but men in similar situations for any and all upcoming elections and re-elections. Dudek, the Montana candidate, says the lack of these laws shows that they need to have more women in power so policies can be changed. In state news, SCORP is something many po uh, folks are looking into for uh, funding uh, for parks and trail improvements to help people with disabilities, elder folks who have difficulties on some of those trickier trails in the Montana area, and of course, narrow paths and hazardous vegetation. SCORP stands for Statewide Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan. It's fairly funded to give everyone a chance to get out and about money uh, from taxed oil and gas known as the Land, uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund, will total th which totals $38 million, which should go to these plans. Um, of course, so far, this has been an ongoing plan. They've been working on this for many years. And so far, outreach included uh, ADA, uh, Americans with Disabilities Act, access, uh, elderly folks, um, public forums and all stuff like that, but they're also taking time to reach out to the tribes in Montana for further comments. So that's what's happening there. And of course, in national news, uh, big thing that happened, uh, almost like kind of under the radar, and most people didn't really realize until it just happened, it went into effect on Monday, and that is the tobacco uh, age restriction ris rose from 18 to 21. So anybody who's looking to buy tobacco, nicotine, any of those kind of products, 
have to be 21 years of age or older in the, the United States. And of course, many advocates have uh, raised the uh, tobacco age to 21 in many states in the, the United States. Um, but the official, you buy cigarettes, vaping products, chew tobacco, whatever, you have to be 21. It happened basically at 1201 <laughs> um, January 1st. Of course, the crazy part is the tobacco industry actually helped pass this new law, but health advocates are not wholeheart wholeheartedly celebrating the change because they say that they would, uh, the tobacco company might use this as leverage to help uh, uh, deal with some tax breaks and mo things moving forward and how uh, they're going to enforce a lot of these laws. Of course, this comes after many states, including Montana, began, began to ban flavored vape juice, which contributed to a whole new generation of teens hooked on tobacco slash nicotine products. Many uh, critics of big, t big Tobacco said they would use this as leverage to avoid future taxing that would be used for education and prevention. International news. Uh, the U.S. might be going to war to I with Iran uh, just recently, Friday. Uh, of course, it happened earlier. A uh, drone strike... Uh, a bombed key military Iranian figure, Major General uh, Qasem Soleimani. Uh, he's already uh, with already high tension between the U.S. and Iran. Uh, Supreme Leader Ali uh, Khamenei uh, said that there would be uh, severe revenge awaiting the criminals. Um, as leader of the Quds Force, he was said to ha be responsible for the country's development and coordination with militias and proxy force, uh, forces throughout the Middle East. U.S. officials accuse him of coordinating Iraqi military attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq. Back in 2018, uh, Soleimani said to Trump, if you begin the war, we will end the war. So far, the U.S. military are told to stand by for any retaliations from Iranian military. So that's kind of what's happening now. It's ongoing. It's uh, constantly changing of exactly what's going to happen. So we're uh, basically on standby. So uh, that's kind of what's happening in and around the world today. Here's a couple new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. Um, if you get, didn't get a chance, uh, most of the programs from our holiday concerts are on our MCAT website, MCAT.org. And here's a little taste of Tuba Christmas along with uh, Montana Book Festival and other things that are happening within the city of Missoula. And it's going to air on MCAT on Channel 89 this weekend. So here you go. Well, I always wanted to write a, 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 a writing, you know, advice not a uh, book but mine was called you know everything i know about writing from being a domestic diva you know like you know clean your house and you know get rid of all the clutter you know all the things that you hear about but i'm really not a domestic diva and so i didn't really get very far with that and you know metaphor but that's you know there, there are, you know, when you think about it, that it is sort of like life, you know, you get rid of all the boring things. <laughs> I took a picture once, you know, like, you restructure your novel and then note to yourself, like, get rid of all the boring bits, you know. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's just common sense stuff, but, you know, when, you, when you're really close to work, you, you can't see that. Um, that in order to to stabilize ourselves and make sure that we could continue to grow and move forward we needed to find a way to create private funding for our organization that we could depend on that we knew wasn't up to the legislature what we got and what we didn't so in the very beginning um, we made a, a decision that really started the ball for us and that was So we have a lot of great programs on there. Um, 
uh, other programs that are coming out this week and are a couple of movies. It's time for Pre-Critic, where I judge a movie whether it needs it or not, based on absolutely nothing but its poster and uh, preconceived, uh, preconceived, preconceived notions. Yeah, I keep on botching that. Who cares? We're just going to keep on moving forward. I just talk real fast. All right. The Grudge. From, if you go to that haunted house, you will die genre, The Grudge. It's about a crazy Japanese-based story about a vengeful spirit. Probably died in a vengeful way, you know, evil, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's usually, like, stuff like that. But why not kick off the 2020 season right with a horror film, which, you know, usually horror films that don't come out during the time of Halloween and whatnot are usually the ones that are just like, okay, this movie is just going to be, uh, we don't know what to do with this movie. Let's just throw it out in the week months, like January or whatever. So that's just what you're going to get here. At first of the year January film that's probably been on the shelf for some time as well. Of course, here, this is what happens in the movie. Okay, so the, imagine a person goes in the house and be like, you don't go in that house. I'm like, I'm going to go in the house. I don't care what you say. It's like, wait, something weird's going on here. I'm going to Google it. Okay, so I'm haunted. I'm going to call this person who happens to be in the Google feed, and the person's like, you must leave this house, but now you are cursed. You will die. And then just like, is there anything I can do? It's like, there might be one thing. Then they try the might be one thing. They survive to the end, and then, you know, it's like the typical horror ending. They, like, there's a flash of the evil monster, and then there's, like, cut to black where it's, impo it's implied that they die, or they actually do die at the end, and then the whole ending of the movie is a whole new people moving into that house where they're going to be attached by the ventral spirit with a final shot of the monster kind of on looking in the foreground at the people in the background just kind of walking in the house. So that's basically what you can expect from this movie. <sighs> Next up, this is a movie that... Uh, I didn't really talk about too much, but uh, it came out uh, just over the holiday weekend as well. It's called Spies in Disguise. While this movie is already out and about, it must be pre-critic for my sake. This is a 2019 roundup. This movie might have disguised its way past me, but will now spy on... Just go with me on this. Uh, Spies in Disguise follows the basic trope of cool guy turned into an animal, but must rely on another person they bullied in the first act to get them through the thing. It's basically like the Emperor's New Groove, and the groove part is the Will Smith part. Anyways, you know, the, basically the whole concept of this movie is that you have to become a better person to become a person again, figuratively and literally, in this movie. And it's basically like Beauty and the Beast rules minus the love and replaced with self-respect. You know, self-love. Next up, we got Little Women. Um, this darling of a film follows a flock of young women aged 14 to 17, by, but played by 25 to 30-year-old uh, women. Uh, in a period piece about four different women, uh, they have their own story, much like Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, Love Loss, and a little bit of Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, minus the pants, plus the skirts. You know the skirts are so thick it can stop a bullet. That's the kind of thickness that you get from the post-Civil War. This movie follows a leader of a bunch uh, as she tries to be a writer in a male-dominated field. <laughs> Good thing that's changed. Uh, watch this movie about a sisterhood of a traveling pants without the pants, and it's probably based on a book deal. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's time for me to rewatch Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. All right, so those are about the movies that are coming out this weekend as well. I'm going to throw it to a movie called... Too Late for Tears, and it's a dub and stuff video, so when I come back, I'm going to be talking about some of the uh, First Friday stuff that are happening. There's not much going on. It is January, and they just got done with some of the stuff with uh, 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 First Night, which is like the big Missoula thing that happens for New Year's Eve. So I'll, ha I'll have a video for you on that after I talk about this, but before that, here is dub and stuff. There's no place like home. There's no place like home. Oh... Oh man, oh this is my home? Ugh. Ah, <gasps> blasted keys. Garage boat. There we go. <gasps> Who are you? <laughs> and don't you recognize me, darling? I'm just wearing this hat. Hat you glad I didn't say banana? Uh, -huh, my hair's in the shop. Oh, uh, well your hair's clearly right in front of me. Sorry I barged in here unannounced. I thought the fact that you gave me the key in the first place means that I can come here anytime I want. Well, I'm happy that you're here. It's just that my hair's not from the shop and, uh... All right, that's enough about that shop. Can you just tell me? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll tell you next time I pop on by. Wait. Listen, I know you're not dressed pretty, but I think you're pretty. So be pretty and be pretty on my mouth and kiss me. Oh, wow, you know how to rev up a girl's engine. Oh, geez. I'm getting winded falling around this apartment. Do you mind if I take off my hat and throw it on this couch? Well, no... Oh, it looks like you did it anyways. Huh? You should like to keep a dock in here. Hmm. Well, you know, it's the best way to play Fortnite in the dark. You know, adjust the lighting in your room and you have a better lighting on your TV. And you save a lot TV. of power. 
Listen, honey, there's something I need to tell you, something. Mm, well? I just think you're just swell. Let's get married. Mm, no, I don't think so. I'd be really good to you. Also, I have a boat. How can one have moist and dry hands? Because I'm simultaneously nervous and dehydrated. Hmm, I didn't know I was that kind of girl to have that effect on men. You're my kryptonite. I like your comic book reference. I just know a few from the movies. What kind of movies have you seen? Uh, <laughs> you know, like the big kind of movies that people like to go stand in line for and watch and see and have a good time. Funny movies and sad movies and... I prefer a man who likes the Fast and Furious franchise. Because they have some great life lessons about family and... And Corona? If that's all you glean from this conversation, then this conversation's over. Mm, I don't think it's over. Well then, fine. Allow me to chastise you a little bit more about Fast and Furious. The Fast franchise is the best franchise that has ever existed. And if you don't believe me, then I want a divorce. Uh, but honey, we're not married. Perhaps may I suggest we get married? Uh, not this again. Hmm, perhaps when we get married, we can get divorced afterwards. Well, on this day, we can't just get divorced here and there. There's a huge process and everything. Oh, man, getting divorced is so complicated. But we should not get married just because we don't not like the same movies. <laughs> That's exactly the point. We don't have to like the same movies. We just have to like each other. Come on. I like you. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, did you like it? Was it my singing? It wasn't not your singing. You know, the law back in the 20s said that you can't kiss before marriage. But now we've kissed. So we might as well get married. What do you think? Uh, well, I, I don't know about that. That seems kind of stupid. You can't just kiss anyone. <laughs> well, uh, let me just find my handkerchief so I can cry. Oh, jeez. Okay, let me write something down for you. Well, there you go. It's an IOU for a kiss. Okay. Don't kiss and sing. <sighs> wow, that was quite the kiss, honey. I thought you didn't like me. You're quite the fickle lady, after all. I'm gonna go, um... Watch Fast and Furious, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, how dare you? I don't want you to think less of me just because I don't haven't watched Fast and Furious. Uh, just think less of me because I'm a jerk. I don't even close the door. Oh, jeez. Hmm. That's the, That's the last, last time, time I do I online, online dating. Dating. Thus concludes dubbing stuff. Enjoy it next time in the new Roaring Twenties. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some things that are happening for your first Friday. There's not much going on here, but this is some of the events that are happening. Kicking things off is an auction that's happening at the Missouri Art Museum. So the Missouri Art Museum uh, can view all the art featured in the 2020 Benefit Auction during the extended evening hours during first friday many uh meet many artists whose works will be featured at the mam's upcoming benefit auction which will be held on february 1st they do this every year that helps raise money for Missouri museum and their activities and benefits uh the community as well because uh Missouri art museum is a uh one of the few art museums in the nation that are actually free admission. So you can just go in there look at the art anytime uh they don't ever have like uh, an exhibit that's there all the time, so it's new every time. Every month you go in there, there's a new exhibit, all sorts of things happening in there, a lot of rotation in there. It's really cool, and it's had some really good stuff as well, and they've had a lot of great things. So, uh, so of course, you know, bidding during this month of January, the first round of Silent Auction does open today, and you can give it, uh, you can go to givery.us slash MAM auction to register or participate. You can go to uh, MizzouArtMuseum.org for the links and all that stuff as well. Up next, we have another art museum. This is the Fur Ravens Gallery. Sell the first Friday with a new decade of uh, continuation of the music in Missoula through the camera. Uh, of course, this is a visual medium through uh, uh, William Minot's uh, presented a, a collection of images featuring over, over 25 artists, including scenes from performances by Trey Anastasio, uh, Rainbow Kitten Sun, Surprise, Dawes, 
Sylvan Esso, Alice Cooper, Dean Ween, Lake, uh, Lake Street Dive, and Dorothy. So I think it's a really cool exhibit as well. And these are all the people that have come through the city of Missoula. And William Mizzou has been able to collect a lot of these artists that have come to Missoula and that we were fortunate enough to see. And it's going to be at Four Ravens Gallery, 5 to 8 p.m. But of course, you can go there pretty much any time. Zen Medicine, uh, first Friday. It's an art show uh, works by NSA uh, Aniso uh, Castro, uh, Josh... Uh, uh, I can't pronounce that name, sorry. But uh, Shandy Anastasia and uh, Delta 9 uh, refreshments are provided. Uh, just call him Josh F. Um, this is what's happening there. Uh, there's not much going on here. Uh, so this is happening at Lake Missoula Tea Company. It's the group photo show known as The Last Best Place. Montana has opened our eyes to beauty of the world and our uh, desperate desire to protect the mountains, rivers, and forests that compose our planet. Our goal is to inspire you to care and to see how important it is to protect the planet that we live in. All four of us value the feelings of being wild and free, whether we are backpacking, trail running, climbing, or skiing. We have several photographs composed of landscapes found around the United States. We ask that you do not wander uh, where these places are, but more think about why they matter. Um, and, you know, that's some of the art that's going to be happening at Lake Missoula Tea Company. I saw them put it in up just the other day when I was there, and uh, it's a lot of great photography. And they put it up nice and high, and they'll have a couple other presentations and music stuff happening at the Lake Missoula Tea Company as well. All right, so those are some of your art stuff. There's a lot of ongoing stuff as well. I'm going to have more on your uh, art and your uh, downtown guide and what to do today and tomorrow. Um, and, uh, of course, this weekend as well. I have a... Of course, I want to talk a little bit more about First Night. First Night, uh, I wandered around, and I probably got like five, ten second clips of just all of the stuff I kind of went to and kind of saw and thought it was pretty interesting, and I just wanted to kind of share it with you. Um, for, for, so the, for the next uh, minute and a half, you got a, a scope of what you guys missed out or if you guys already saw this um, during First Night Missoula. So without further ado, here is a retrospect of First Night Missoula. white cis guy that we've got. There you go. There's basically a, a whole day's worth, 10 hours, uh, just going to first night, all sorts of events happening in and around the city of Missoula. I give you a nice little scope of kind of what happened there as well. All right, so let's talk about some of the events that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. Uh, kicking things off, of course, you know, the Zach is doing some kind of pajama camp that's happening uh, today, and it happened yesterday as well. I just want to give a nice retrospect of that. Um, many of the places are doing a couple, like, day camps, MCT, day, uh, I think it was a play in a day. Um, they did a couple of those just for some of the lull of the uh, last of uh, the days off or winter break for some of the kids out there. Uh, of course, if the kids are interested in doing a little bit of something, if they're getting a little stir crazy and if they got a bunch of new Legos and toys that they want to bring to life through stop animation, MCAT does our Saturday drop-ins every Saturday and it did it all winter long and I don't think we're not going to we're not going to not do it until after uh, Memorial Day weekend. But of course, we might end it a little bit early I'm not, I'm, I'll, I'll let you guys know if we do end it a little bit early and we'll post it on our Facebook page, uh, MCAT's Facebook page as well. Um, I believe that because we'll be moving into the new, new library, May, June, we might just uh, stop it by the end of uh, what's before May? 
April. Boom. So we might end it at the end of April just because of the whole transition over to the new library. All right. So, uh, yeah, just so you guys know, basically the new library is going to happen in the next five months. It's crazy. So many things are happening. Uh, all right. So let's talk about some of the events that are happening. Uh, Missoula Public Library, as always, has uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime for any of those young kids who want to learn to read or get involved with books. Uh, Missoula Pu Public Library opens a free form for uh, parents and their children to pick up books and learn up to nine new words a day. And kids are like sponges. They learn a lot, and but you got to give them the opportunity to learn, and that's what Missoula Public Library does. Every it seems like it happens pretty much every day, but you want to check their schedule online at missoulapubliclibrary.org. Spectrum to Science uh, Discovery is doing a dig into Earth science experiments at the Discovery Bench. Uh, this is for uh, anyone um, four and over, and anyone three gets in free. It's a uh, pretty great opportunity for a lot of kids and a lot of the family members to get engaged in science. Uh, just a lot of great opportunities as well. Um, Yarns and Watercolor at Missoula Public Library. If you're interested in doing some art or making some arts and crafts, uh, uh, Missoula Public Library is another great place to be. But also they're doing an art workshop at some independent livery, living. Uh, this is at 725 West Alder Street, just basically down the street from where we are, downtown at MCAT. It's base. Uh, join us for a fun afternoon of playing with uh, powdered watercolors from 1 to 3 p.m. at base. Base is an all ages, all abilities community center run by some independent living. Uh, this is a free class, and they'll be working on non toxic watercolor powders, highly unpredictable and fun to paint with. Uh, it leads itself to be a loose, expressive style. Once the watercolor powder is applied, you really have no choice than other than to let it paint and do the work. Uh, teen Writers Group at the Missoula Public Library this afternoon from 3.30 to f uh, 5.30 p.m. Improve your writing skills, um, trade up on ideas, and just basically work on a little inspiration, have some feedback, um, have a little chocolate as well from what I hear. Uh, but also happening t uh, tonight as well as the Electronic Producers Showcase, Newtown Arts Community Center. Basically EDM, DJ music, all sorts of wonderful things, uh, classes, and this is happening from 7 to 11 p.m. Uh, uh, the Missoula Beats Club, formerly Cool Beats Club, will be hosting an interactive evening of electronic music production tonight uh, featuring five line production sets. The producers will be making the music right before our eyes using a wide assortment of inexpensive gadgets and, and expensive gizmos as well. Uh, so on Saturday... Um, introduction to a biodynamic uh, conosarcal therapy. The Learning Center of Widerillo is doing a introduction class to the uh, therapy, a whole person approach to healing and the inner connections of bodies, mind, and spirit. Uh, winter story telling is at with uh, Tony in Shilohu. Uh, it is going to be at the Travel Dress State, uh, State Park and Visitor Center. Salish Elder Tony shares his traditional and personal stories. I'm not going to try saying his last name again. I'm sorry. Um, MCAT Saturday drop-ins, like I said, is from 1 to 5 p.m. It's $10 per kid, $15 for siblings. So if you have three siblings, it's $15 for the three of them. Blah, blah, blah. Just do the math. Uh, <laughs> So that's pretty much uh, it for your Saturdays, but I wanted to also mention that Footloose Montana presents Trap Release Workshop. Humane Society of Western Montana trapping season has begun. What will you do if your pet is caught in a trap? Learn the first aid and how to handle a trap in an emergency. Learn trapping regulations and how to avoid traps. Traps are indiscriminate and set to catch and kill animals. Be prepared when you venture out with your best friend. All right, so that's happening on Sunday, and it's going to be at uh, the Humane, so Humane Society at 1 p.m. Uh, a whole bunch of events happening as well, but I wanted to kind of go over some of the late-night events. If you're going out and about tonight, they have a neon lights at the Flying Squirrel, so it's usually, you know, you can bounce around in trampolines, but they turn off the lights for some neon lights. Uh, Westbound Train is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Sunrise Saloon is your place for country music. Restness and the Revelator, Revelators is going to be at Union Club. They usually miscellaneous music, uh, but you might have some kind of a, a Pearl Jam kind of a vibe to it as well, if you like that kind of dance Pearl Jam. Uh, Sunlight Black is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. It's going to be some rock music. Usually, uh, top, uh, yeah, yep, Top Hat Lounge is a great venue for a lot of live bands as well. If you're going out and about on a Saturday night, you got Westbound Train. That's going to be at the Sunrise Saloon, um, country music. Uh, Wailing, Aaron Jennings' album release party is going to be at the Union Club. So Aaron Jennings is a guy who also does, uh, who will help launch the community radio. He's a good musician as well. Karaoke night with Kaleidoscope Entertainment is going to be at Lolo Hot Springs. It's going to be a karaoke DJ. Um, 
I'd say absolutely with Chris and the Badlanders, so have some DJ music and stuff like that. Uh, Neon Lights, Flying Squirrel again on Saturday night, and Don Tetra at the VFW uh, is going to be on Saturday night. So those are some of the events happening in and around the city of Missoula. If you're interested in uh, any other stuff, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net and MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's happening, Missoula? This is what's happening in Missoula. But of course, I have another art clip for you guys before I dive into more stuff as well. I'm going to save a little bit of city council for the end. Don't worry. I don't have any clips. And it's not going to take about 30 minutes. It's going to basically be about five minutes. And then I'm going to wrap up the show right after this art clip. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk a little bit about city council, because there's not going to be a city council on Monday, uh, but not according to the sheet, on the ci.missoula.mt.us, which is the city of Missoula's website. Um, you can go to this website anytime. You can kind of see upcoming meetings and agenda items and all sorts of things like that. But one of the big things that are happening within the city is that they're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Parks and Rec, Open Space, and Conservation Lands Advisory Committees, and they'll be having this at a presentation for all to see at the Double hotel on monday at 5 15 they'll have pizza and probably a, sli a, a slideshow of course th no official city council meetings for next monday uh one of the big things that are happening as well is that there's going to be three new city council members because John Debari Ward 4 is being replaced by An Amber Sherrill. Uh, Julie Armstrong, Ward 5, is being replaced by John P. Contos. Um, Michelle Cares from Ward 6 is going to be uh, replaced by Sandra Fisecki. Um Most of the ward members from previous times have not so, uh, sought re-election, so uh, there will be brand new members in the city of Missoula as well. And we'll see how the... The dy dynamic changes. It's going to be a, quite a uh, change within the city of Missoula as well. And I'll be, hopefully, it'll take me a little while to learn some of the names. But other than that, I pretty much know most of the city council members. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not going to name them now. Don't pressure me. All right. So like I said, it's going to be nice and short and sweet and to the point. Um, but I wanted to uh, kind of mention once again um, where you can find out more information about my show, Wake Up Missoula. You can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. If you Google Wake Up Missoula, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook and the Google, um, all sorts of things like that. I don't know why I said you can find me on Google on Google. That's stupid. Or right, anyways, and you can go to MCAT.org for more information about MCAT. You can call us on this number right here, which is uh, 406-213-9478. Um, it's a new number. Of course, our original number is 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. It is a, uh, I mean, it is our direct line, but the number right there is a rerouted line, so if you leave any messages, it also gets digitally transcripted, so we can get to you right as soon as possible. So that's the big number change if you go use the number on our website, MCAT.org. But if you use uh, the 542-6228 number, you might, uh, you, uh, and if you don't leave a message, we won't know who called. So, well, once again, that number is 213-9478.
All right, so that pretty much does it for Wake Up Missoula. I want to say thank you, and I'm glad to be back, and I hopefully will have a plenty of more stuff happening next Friday for you guys. Just a lot of things happening in the news, a lot of things happening. We're just getting out of the uh, winter session. I hope you guys had a wonderful holidays, uh, whether which you celebrate or not. Um, it's time to clean up and take down your uh, Christmas tree um, and uh, take down your Christmas light. So it's, it's January. Let's do it. All right, good luck, and it's a brand new year. I hope take care. I don't know how many times I have to say goodbye, but goodbye. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Mm -hmm.